This is Twit. The idea behind Google Ideas um, was essentially to look at some of the biggest security challenges in the world through the lens of technology. And at the time, um, before our team had um, proper engineering resources, before we became a technology organization, um, we were really just trying to understand these threats uh, and think about how technology played a role in them and um, how that affected the company's decision making. But the story of Google Ideas and um, eventually becoming Jigsaw is really that um, our team building the capability to, to build technology tools and to address the threats that we're forecasting. Uh, some might say, I told you I wouldn't ask any pointed questions, but let's ask a pointed question. You said it was okay. Fire away. Some might say this is just a PR uh, arm of Google to reassure everybody Google cares. Is that, I mean, defend yourself. <laughs> Dan. All right. Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, a company like Google, uh, they create something like this. Uh, you know, the, the term is used as a think tank, right? But uh, do you actually, uh, I guess the best defense would be, here's, here's what we're actually doing as opposed to what we're talking about. Sure. So um, I'll take that in um, reverse order. Uh, I think... The reason why Google and Alphabet invests in our kinds of work is it's important for the company to understand how these kinds of threats are going to evolve over uh, a longer term horizon. Um, and that's things like terrorism, censorship, uh, online harassment, cyber attacks, uh, attacks on journalism around the world. Um, these questions are, are critical to open societies, but they're also really important to technology companies. Uh, who are thinking about how to increase access to information all around the world. So our job at Jigsaw is to forecast these threats um, years ahead of time and really understand where they're going, the trends, um, how to affect them, and then to build technology tools that address those threats. So we're, we're much more even than a research organization. Um, research is a key part of what we do, um, but that research is really meant to inform our product development. And we have a number of tools that directly confront uh, the issues that we study. Oh, good. Well, I'll get to the tools in a second because I want to go through them and find out more about them. I think it's really fascinating, though, that Google foresaw this 10 years ago. I think it's it's only within the last couple of years, particularly since the 2016 election, that people have started to wake up to the potential threat that social media, a global Internet um, and and uh, new twenty four hour news can pose to a republic, uh, but it sounds like Google's been aware of that potential threat for some time. Well, I think if you go back to Google's mission statement, which is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful, the part that I think Jigsaw really focuses on is that universally accessible part, mm. um, because as as promising as the growth of technology is, there are actors all over the world who are actively trying to constrain people's access to information. And that's either through things like censorship or making it harder for people to report the news or um, in some cases using technology as a tool of oppression. And it's really our job to think about how to make that universally accessible part true. And in cases when technology is being used as a tool of oppression, um, to protect people and important institutions and to make it harder for uh, the oppressors to do what they're trying to do. All of this sounds fantastic. <laughs> it also sounds like the uh, Aegean stables. It sounds like an endless chore. Do you feel, are we making progress or are we going backwards? I think, I think the story is mixed. Um, on the one hand, I think we're seeing a real increase in a public conversation around these issues, which I think is really important. Um, I know when we started working on, for example, protecting news organizations from certain kinds of cyber attacks, when you went to talk about this, you really had to explain even what a cyber attack was right. uh, and how it worked. And now, we, and the same was true when you went to go talk to political parties or political candidates about how to keep their campaigns and how to keep their accounts safer and what kind of threats were out there. Um, the general shared knowledge 
you know, many, many years ago was not very high. And, and now when you go and you talk to these kinds of organizations, uh, mostly, most of the time they're fluent in these issues because they've had to live them. Uh, and these things are as critical as ever. And, and 2016, um, the presidential election and, um, all of the sort of incidents that have followed, I think have just clarified that these issues are, are taking on a, a new sense of urgency and sort of a public conversation. Um, so that's encouraging um, that we're having public conversations about this and that we're sort of broadening the circle yeah. of people who can participate in these issues. Um, as technology proliferates around the world, though, we're constantly having to confront new threats and evolving threats. So our work is by no means done, um, but we're just getting started. Yeah. So uh, the, the cool thing about Jigsaw is it's not just thinking and writing about this stuff. You're actually creating tools. That's right. Yeah. Tell, tell me about some of the tools uh, that you've... I know you're working on new ones, and then some have graduated and are out there in the real world. When they're done, do, they kind of, do you kind of release them to some other entity, or do you continue to manage them? How does that work? It varies. Um, so Jigsaw is an interdisciplinary team. Um, so just behind me, behind this wall, there are a group of software engineers working alongside product managers, designers, former diplomats, consultants, researchers... Um, experts in a wide variety of issues. Um, so many of the issue, many of the tools that we build sort of are designed to directly confront the issues that we study. So for example, um, we've observed that a certain type of cyber attack, a DDoS attack, a denial of service attack, was um, increasingly being used as a tool for censorship. So the way that that kind of cyber attack works is you overwhelm servers with traffic and take them offline. China just did uh, that to a Telegram. So you you see this all over the world, yeah. um, and it's it's a it's a fairly inexpensive and easy uh, type of attack to launch. It's often um, easy to deny, uh, you know, where the origin of the attack was. And so what we saw is that all over the world, small and medium sized publishers were being taken offline, oh, and in many cases, they didn't wow. even know they were under cyber attack. Wow, uh, and yeah, they just think, uh, hey, the server's down. Yeah, they think yeah. they're having technical issues. Yeah. And um, these publishers, critically, are, first of all, usually not um, rich enough to pay for really expensive commercial protection services. Uh, and second of all, they're often on the front lines in, in conflict areas or in places where um, you know journalism is scarce. Um, these are often some of the most critical outlets to preserve if you want to understand what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And so we created a, a service called Project Shield uh, that protects news organizations, political organizations, human rights groups uh, all around the world for free uh, from this particular kind of cyber attack. Yeah, we've talked about Project Shield. It's a really uh, remarkable thing. It's kind of some, similar to what Cloudflare is doing, isn't it, or no? Yeah, exactly. Um, we're really encouraged by the fact that... Um, the market has responded to this need, and you see other vendors starting to provide similar free services for institutions that are really important for democratic societies. Yeah. Um, journalism, political organizations, that kind of a thing. Um, so if a site's being the DDoS, other... they can route their traffic through Project Shield. You have such big pipes uh, that the DDoS yeah. usually is thwarted. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of experience uh, yeah. dealing with this sort of thing, and we have... Um, I would say, an unmatched technical capability to defend ourselves against these kinds of attacks. And so we offer that, um, that same level of protection uh, to these kinds of institutions. I think that's really... And that's uh, just one of them. Yeah, oh, I understand. I think that's a really an important thing to remember is that uh, companies like Telegram Messenger probably have the resources when uh, China tries to block them. Telegram was being used in Hong Kong to facilitate the uh, protests last week. And uh, suddenly they got DDoSed. Hmm. Uh, but they, but, but it's the little local newspaper. It's the little local source of information uh, that could that is that doesn't have those resources. I think that's a, a, something we. I think we tend to forget. It sounds like that's one of the things you really try to do with Jigsaw is think more globally, think beyond the borders of the United States. Yeah, I mean the truth is, if you're designing good technology. Um, you really shouldn't be thinking locally um, or you shouldn't be thinking in terms of specific countries or geographies. Um, most of the issues that we confront exist in some way 
all over the world. Uh, and in our case, you know, we try to we try to adopt a global perspective, not only because it's the right thing, but we end up building better technology that way. Uh, and, and studying the circumstances in a lot of different environments, I think, makes for better products.